go downstairs. Something just doesn't sit right, does it? The TV just turns on. Freaks me out when I'm home alone. I feel a bit unnerved, to be honest. Well, let's have a look in the garage. I felt like this gentleman was very angry. Well, I think he's a key to something, and I'm not sure what it is yet. This week, the rescue mediums visit a house in the usually quiet community of Georgetown, where all are convinced they've been visited by the same eerie presence. In the back bedroom where my middle daughter sleeps, she had um, feelings that there's always somebody there. Almost every night, I feel there's always somebody in my room. Holly went in to get just a can of pop. I got my pop, and then I shut it, and there was a face right in front of me. I didn't see, like, a whole body or anything. It was just, like, a face. She booked it out there pretty quick. Noises down the hallways. Doors closing. And I just saw a black shadow go past the window. You think you see something? You question yourself. <laughs> I could feel someone standing there watching me from the bottom of the stairs. And then gradually, he started to come up the stairs. He came right up behind me, could feel him breathing on my neck. He's gone out of his way to make sure people know he's here. The rescue mediums are on their way to help. Jackie and Allison are renowned psychics who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. I have never seen this gentleman, but I feel him. Huge. The rescue mediums have been given no prior knowledge of their destination. Even the name of the town has been kept secret until now. Although days earlier, they had some disturbing premonitions. The feeling of being woken in the night, and it's a panicky feeling with this. I actually felt somebody hovering over top of me. That's quite scary, isn't it? I could hear them breathing. Feeling a foreboding darkness in one area in the building. No one goes in the back room. You just get this, like, not wanted feeling in there. Got the definite feeling there was somebody in there with me. Not a good feeling. And dull. I don't want to look at the time dolls. They're creeping me out. No, I don't want to look at them. <laughs> I've called it ahead of time. It's just the head. There's nothing else. It's, it's just the head. head. In addition to their premonitions, the rescue mediums have created these psychic drawings of what they expect to find during their investigation. The rescue mediums arrive at the troubled residence. Garage. You did. It's on your, uh, your predictions, isn't it? Where each family member has their own urgent need. I hope the rescue mediums can find out what message this gentleman wants to pass along. I would like that the rescue mediums would be able to make, especially this lower level, so that everybody is comfortable down here by themselves. I just feel that he either needs help or he has some sort of message that's very important that he's trying to get across. Jackie and Allison are the rescue mediums, psychics who make house calls. Hi, I'm Jackie. Hey. Hi, I'm Lynn. Hi, Lynn. I'm, I'm Allison. Allison. Nice Hello. to meet nice you. To Come meet in. You. The rescue mediums sit down with the family to present their premonition. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> <laughs> we never know what we're going to find. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through some of the premonitions that we've had before we came here. The time of four o'clock being significant in some way, do you recognise that? Yeah. The name of Chrissy as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Somebody who's very artistic and asked artist's easels. Yes. OK. 
something odd about a garage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And turquoise, a turquoise in a bedroom? Bedroom, yes. Yeah, okay. A particular area in the property that feels dark and foreboding. Yes. A lethargic feeling, loss of energy, depression. Mm -hmm. Dolls, like a living doll. Yeah, and that's how I've actually drawn it, but the face looks sort of quite confused. I'm not quite sure where this one will fit in, and I don't know if it's a haunted tunnel or a haunted railway line. And so this one started with just a circle. It just came together very, very quickly within seconds. And then I started another circle here, and then that became this figure that's looking on. I don't know where that one fits in. As the rescue mediums begin their investigation, they immediately feel a dark presence. Did you hear that then? Oh my God. Could these paintings be the source of the haunting? That's what you've drawn. Yeah. In Georgetown, this otherwise average suburban home has experienced an unwelcome presence. I actually felt somebody hovering over top of me and I could hear them breathing. Got a definite feeling there was somebody in there with me. Not a good feeling. The rescue mediums begin their investigation by surveying the boundaries of the property. Now watch what you're doing there. Let's have a look in the garage. I wonder if there's a light switch. Oh, there oh, we go. Nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> an artist's easel. Yes. Somebody who's very artistic and asked artist's easels. OK. Jackie mm. has received the first clue. But where does it lead? Clues, clues. Mm. They feel that okay. this place has a special resonance. There's something very odd about this place. There's something very odd about this place. Watch where you're walking, Jackie. It's quite uh, uneven. Yeah. Right, let's go back inside then. Further investigation within the house is required. They soon feel that they are not alone. Something just doesn't sit right, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Why do we keep getting the windows? Something to do with the windows. Can you see outside? If anybody could look through yeah. and... It would be unnerving, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I'd feel secure. Should we go downstairs, oh, then? Yes. <laughs> Following the pull of psychic energy, okay. Okay. the rescue mediums descend to the basement. Oh, <gasps> there's the dolls. There's a doll. More premonitions become manifest. Is that a Chrissy doll? Chrissy, Chrissy, told you it was a Chrissy. We've got that name in the prems, the name of Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. So we've got. We need to try and put it together. <sighs> what? I thought it was somebody standing behind you then. A presence reveals itself to Alison. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All the clues lead to here, don't they? Mm. Further into the basement, oh. more evidence of a spirit's presence emerges. Oh, now this is interesting. Oh, Oh, God, more dolls. I don't know what I feel about this room, Jackie. Hmm. I feel a bit unnerved, to be honest. I feel a bit unnerved. Is your heart beating really fast? No, it's not. It's yours. Well, perhaps you've got somebody right with you, then. Hmm. There's somebody following us round. It's a very strange house, don't you think? I do. Did you hear that, then? I heard something. It came from in there. The rescue medium seek the source of the disembodied voice. I heard something, but I wasn't sure what it was. I thought I heard a man talking, saying something. <laughs> Jackie senses that the presence has moved upstairs, and the rescue mediums follow. Oh, it's the turquoise room. The 
turquoise bedspread or turquoise in a bedroom? Bedroom, yes. Yeah? Okay. Oh my God. What? Look. Oh my God. Look at that. Red heart. And that's what you've drawn? Yeah. It's almost as if there's a need for something to be said. Oh, what's this? Is this a... Whoa! Oh, my God. But it's my uh, oh. ahead of time. <gasps> I think is a key to something, and I'm not sure what it is yet. Well, I'm trying to listen to you and take things seriously, but that That's... head is looking at me. Alison. Can we go out of this room? It's now? a dummy. Oh, there's something about it. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry. Hello? Who sleeps in this turquoise room? It is the family's middle daughter who was absent from the initial interview with the rescue mediums. Jackie and Alison inquire about the deeper significance of her paintings. How long have you been drawing? Um, since I can remember my entire life. So the, the type of artwork that you say you've got down there in the, in the frame, was that done for a particular reason or they're just uh, certain pieces that you've put together? I got in a mood one night. They were done at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> God. Are they yeah. done at four o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Okay. The time of four o'clock being significant in some way, do you recognise that? Yeah. They seem quite angry, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Was this one done at four o'clock in the morning? It started with a circle and... Okay. So this one started with just a circle. It just came together very, very quickly within seconds. Mm. Interesting. Is this young woman the final clue to the male presence haunting this home? Next. She's waiting for somebody. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. This man's throwing papers everywhere. He feels as though he's just lost her completely. The rescue mediums are investigating this Georgetown it's almost home. almost as if there's a need for something to be said. Where a daughter's artwork may be acting as a psychic conduit. They seem quite... Angry? Yeah. <laughs> Armed with this new information, the rescue mediums continue their investigation. I think there's... I think there is a female that's with us. I think there is a female that's with us. Pulled by troubled vibrations, the rescue mediums return to the basement. That's it. We just go back in there. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. This lady, what's she doing? What's she doing? She's waiting for somebody. She's not trapped, but somebody else is. The female spirit is leading them back to the troubled male ghost they met earlier. Let's just sit on the floor. This man's throwing papers. Right. He's throwing papers everywhere because he's angry about something. The paintings that Darcy does, somebody's influencing her with those. Right. The rescue medium sense that this is the spirit connected to the daughter's artwork. It's not conscious. She doesn't know it's happening, and it's got to be significant for the time. Four o'clock in the morning. And that's when she feels compelled to do these. And it's heart-wrenching. Drawing how he feels inside yeah. that's being portrayed in yeah. those paintings. Jackie and Alison divine that the two spirits are somehow connected. God, do you know why I'm so thick? She's waiting for him, but he can't see her. He feels as though he's just lost her completely. And she's calling to him, but it's like there's no sound coming out. We may have to visualise a path between them, yeah. Jackie. Yeah, that's a good idea. OK, let's do that then. Get them to walk towards each other. Seeking to reunite the two spirits, the rescue begins. So we need you to turn around. You see in the path. OK, good. You've seen the pass. Can you see her as well? Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh, she's in a wedding dress. 
get them to walk towards each other. <sighs> He's holding his hands out now to her. Oh, God. He's getting hold of his hands. They were going to get married. Oh, God. I'm in my best dress. It's like they're going down an aisle. Both spirits have entered the light. That's it. Have they gone? Yeah. Shut the door behind. <laughs> I feel emotional. Yeah, well, you do. You've helped sort of two lovers oh. to get together, haven't you? Oh, that was sad. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's lovely. That's so nice. No, I feel all right. That's I think, brilliant. I think we should go to the wedding reception now. I think we should. I think we should have it. <laughs> Next, the rescue mediums present their findings to the homeowners and compare it to independent research. Here's the really sad thing. Inside the suburban home. Oh, do you know why I'm so thick? Because she's waiting for him. But well, he can't see her. The rescue medium struggled. He's angry about something. To reunite two wayward spirits and show them into the light. They were going to get married. Jackie and Alison sit down with the homeowners to present the results of their investigation. I just want to make you aware of just of certain facts that we talked about earlier. Turquoise bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Four o'clock being significant in some way. They were done at four o'clock in the morning. They yeah. were done at four o'clock in the morning? Yeah. OK. And the head. I was nearly frightened to death when I opened the cupboard in your bedroom and there's a head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And drawing circles. So this one started with just a circle. It just came together very, very quickly, within seconds. We knew we had to talk to you about your drawings. It started with a circle. Started with a circle. Yeah. Interesting. As we were doing the walkabout, we were very aware that we needed to go into what we call the pool room. Yeah. We were very aware of you, Darcy, in that room. And then we were aware of a lady who came forward. Then we saw a gentleman. But the lady was trying to talk to him, and there was no sound coming out yeah. of her yeah. mouth. She was mute. He'd not been able to find her. She couldn't find him until we brought them together. In his frustration and anguish, he'd been influencing you at 4 a.m. in the morning when you got that sudden urge to do those pictures of the torso with the heart bleeding. Jackie and Alison believe that these two wayward spirits were drawn to the family's home by Darcy's artistic ability and her psychic sensitivity. All of this anguish that he was feeling you were interpreting in your artwork, she was trying to talk to him. We couldn't get him to understand, and Alison's guide suggested that we build a pathway between the two of them. So one came from one direction, and the other came from the other to meet in the middle. Then they held hands and walked down the aisle and into this beautiful light, absolutely gorgeous. It was quite emotional. Do you remember me showing you that picture? Yes. Yes. And I don't know if it's a haunted tunnel or a haunted railway line. Here's the really sad thing. We now know that Etten and Fred Reed had just got married, and they were in a carriage. <laughs> the wheels of their carriage got caught in a railway track. They were hit by a train. 
She died before she was taken to hospital. He died whilst he was in hospital. It is sad, isn't it? Very. It's oh, are you OK? Oh, God love her. Oh. Death certificates cite a fatal accident of a newlywed couple, Fred and Etta Reed, in 1907. Travelling via carriage between the towns of Guelph and Hespola, they would have passed land adjacent to where this home now stands. The train that struck the newlywed's carriage travelled a rail line connecting the two neighbouring counties. It is a sad story, my darling, but it's got a happy ending now because your talented sister helped to take them through to the light. <laughs> she didn't realise it. You didn't know what you were doing, but you've just helped them so much. He wanted to find, you know, the woman that he loved and he wanted to be with her, and now he can be. So they're the ghosts in your house. Yep. Very cool. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see how your drawings change. You shouldn't have the same sort of urge, sudden urge to do these things. Yeah. yeah. With the spirits in the home reunited and sent into the light, the rescue mediums bid farewell to the homeowners. Thank you so much. Enjoy your house. Oh, yeah, so you carry on with your drawings, OK? And seek to have a reunification of their own but with more agreeable spirit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do you know when they walked through um, the church, those through up the aisle, it was just a lovely, lovely ending, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, the flowers and everything. Here we are having a nice drink in the George Tavern. Yep, yeah, and I've got a little toast for us as well. Oh, great. Huh? Ooh. By George, she's got it. Oh. <laughs>